Hello, my name is Pete Gerlach. I have been a professional family systems therapist for 31 years, and I have been endlessly curious across my life uh, about people and relationships and groups and families and how all of us interact. Um, my work has more or less forced me to get real clear on a set of beliefs that underlie how I attempt to assist people who are looking for help on personal or relationship or family problems. It's been a long, bumpy road. Um, many things I now believe I did not believe some years ago. So I, like you, have been forging my basic beliefs on some key subjects over many years. The reason I'm making this video is, in my experience, um, many people who are troubled personally or relationship-wise often are not clear on what they believe about a set of real fundamental questions. So I want to offer you a subset of the questions that I have encountered along the way and struggled to answer in my own way. I want to offer you a few of them, not all of them. My intent here is to invite you to become aware of what you believe. I'm not trying to sell you on what I believe. Uh, I encourage you to decide when I make the statements I'm about to make. Do you agree? Not to please me, do you just agree because it makes sense? Or do you disagree? And if you do, what do you believe? That is my purpose for making this video. Get clear on what you believe and why you believe it. Um, in my experience, people who are most apt to have personal or relationship problems are people who, for a variety of reasons, are not self-aware. They don't look inside at the amazing world going on inside their skin. So this is my invitation to get relaxed, get quiet, get curious, and look inside your marvelous skin and meet the person who lives there, at least part of her or him. Okay, see how you feel about this. Most kids and adults are unaware of what's going on inside and around them, and they don't know it. This is correctable. Do you believe that or not? Here's another one. Normal personalities, as opposed to pathological, normal personalities, like yours, are composed of semi-independent subcells, which uh, and they govern all thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, and to some extent, an unknown extent, they govern how your body works. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Are you curious? Do you not know? There's another premise. Early childhood trauma, and by that I mean parental abandonment, abuse, and or neglect. Parental trauma on a very young child can significantly damage their emerging personality. Specifically, such trauma can cause a child to develop a false self. It's okay if you don't know what that is. If you want to know, see Lesson 1 in my nonprofit website and the related videos. Another premise. All, I mean all, not some, all personal and social problems are caused by people's false selves and ignorance. Ignorance meaning lack of knowledge and lack of self and process awareness. All the problems in your life I am proposing are caused by people's false selves, unawareness, and ignorance. 
You agree? You disagree? By the way, I'm, I obviously ex exclude physiological problems, biological, illness. I'm talking about psychological and social problems. How about this? I propose that most self-help, however well-meant, however enthusiastic and earnest, will not work either at all or for long. The reason is people giving self-help advice, in my experience, almost always are unaware of the receiver's false self. If you exclude the dominance and the influence of false selves, most self-help fails. Example, diets, trying to quit smoking, although that's physiological, trying to stop cracking your knuckles, biting your fingernails, being late, lying. Those things are caused, in my judgment, by false selves plus unawareness. Most self-help will not help. Once aware of these, people, including you, can improve them, change them, and you really can reduce bad habits, annoying, harmful, bad habits. You really can. But you have to be aware of your false self and you have to learn some things that you were never taught. How about this idea? All addictions, there are four kinds of addictions. All of them are, are caused by a semi-conscious urge to mute or avoid inner pain. Inner pain is a combination of very unpleasant feelings like shame, guilt, fear, anxiety, disgust, despair, confusion, hopelessness, rage, frustration. Put those together and you have inner pain. When you can't find a way of marshalling, managing inner pain, you find that compulsive distractions which is what addictions are, non-organic addictions. They're excellent at distracting you from relentless inner pain. Therefore, addictions are not a character flaw. They're not a disease. They're not an illness. They're a semi-conscious attempt to mute inner pain, and they are not, underline not, shameful. How do you feel about that idea? How about this one? No children and most adults, regardless of their education level, do not know how to communicate effectively and they don't know they don't know and they don't know what they could do to communicate more effectively. You agree? Do you disagree? Are you unsure? What do you believe? That statement I made has come from my study in communication skills for over 40 years. Uh, how about this one? Very few adults, meaning perhaps 20% or, or less, know how to spot incomplete grief and how to finish it. In my experience, most adults don't really understand the process of grieving. Well, my point here is, my challenge to you is, do you think most adults know how to spot grief that's not finished? Do you know the effects of unfinished grief? And do you know how to finish it? I propose most people don't know those things. What do you think? A related premise that I've come to believe is, most depression is in fact unfinished grief and medication will not help you grieve. What do you think about that? Here's a big one. In my experience, most average families, regardless of race, education, background, most American families, I can't speak for other cultures, are dysfunctional. When I say most, I would say 
at least 70% or more are significantly dysfunctional. To answer that question, you have to understand what does dysfunctional mean. I'm not going to go into that here, or I do in other videos. The last um, belief I want to offer you is typical adults, regardless of education or life experience, don't know what causes family dysfunction and they don't know how to reduce it. Period. What do you believe? You agree? You disagree? These are just a few of the core questions that, in my experience, average people don't ask themselves, don't seriously research, don't discuss clearly and reasonably, and they lack this knowledge, and that causes them personal problems, relationship problems, and family problems. So what I'm selling here is personal awareness, and I'm urging you to motivate yourself to learn answers to these and other statements or questions. If you want to see the full list that I've uh, compiled over, say, 30 years, here is the address of a web page on my nonprofit free educational website. I invite you to take a look at this, spend 20 minutes reading and thinking about it, discuss it with people that are important to you. My main point here is become aware of what you believe, and if you're a parent, become aware of what you're teaching the young people in your life. Thanks for watching.